Well, it is a reality check that has received attention from literally all over the nation. Ben's fact check of arguments made by CNN host Piers Morgan and a look at the violent crime rates in the U.S. and in the U.K. But were those numbers really an apples to apples comparison? Tonight's Ben is setting the record straight. It's a reality check you won't see anywhere else. Well, last week we took a look at arguments by CNN host Piers Morgan that a lack of guns in the UK have made it safer than the United States. Among the issues we looked at, a comparison of the violent crime rates between the UK and the US. Or well, shortly after that reality check aired, I received messages from people living in Britain who told me those numbers were not entirely accurate because the violent crime rate in the UK is figured very differently than it is in the US. A couple of blogs made the same claim, and it turns out they are correct. The FBI's Uniform Crime Reports defines a violent crime as one of four specific offenses, murder, manslaughter, forcible rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. The British Home Office has a substantially different definition of violent crime. The British definition includes all crimes against the person, including simple assaults, all robberies, and all sexual offenses. Due to fundamental differences in how crime is recorded and categorized, it is impossible to compute exactly what the British violent crime rate would be if it were calculated the way the FBI does. But if we must compare the two, my best estimate would be something like 776 violent crimes per 100,000 people, writes the skeptical libertarian. So when you break down the apples to apples comparison of violent crime rates between the U.S. and Britain, in 2010, the U.S. had 403 incidents per 100,000 people. The violent crime rate in Britain, while difficult to pin down, is at least 776 per 100,000 people. It's still nearly twice the rate as the U.S., but let's face it, the argument over guns in the U.S. is over guns in the U.S. And if the argument over guns is to be intellectually honest, then why is everyone talking about the so-called assault rifles? The argument has been made that the last four mass shootings have been with assault rifles. Therefore, a ban on assault rifles is necessary. But according to a report by Mother Jones, since 1982, there have been at least 62 mass shootings in 30 states. Of the 142 guns possessed by the killers, more than three quarters were obtained legally. The largest number of guns used, 68, were semi-automatic handguns. Assault rifles were about half that number at 35. So when the argument is made that the way to protect children is to ban assault rifles and high-capacity magazines, statistically, that number does not hold up. According to FBI numbers, in 2011, among those murdered by guns, 119 children ages 12 or younger. The vast majority killed with handguns. That's nearly equivalent to six Newtown mass shootings. So what this means to you is that while we all mourn for the families of those children who were killed in Newtown, we mourn no less for the families of the child killed in a drive-by shooting in Kansas City or the child caught in a gang shooting crossfire in Chicago. For those who are pro-gun control, why not go after handguns instead of assault rifles? Because according to the numbers, fewer handguns might actually mean one more child being saved, as the president said today, is the focus. For people like Piers Morgan, who says he's not calling for a handgun ban, is it fair to ask, why not? And that is Reality Check. You can find the sources for this story posted on our website, fox19.com. And if you'd like to make your voice heard on the story, I always say this, head over to Ben's Facebook page, find it by searching Mr. Ben Swan.